Interstellar is Nolan's masterpiece, though I do tend to say this about every film he does, I'm like yes, that's his masterpiece, masterpiece, this is amazing, and it's just every film he does, he tends to just excel, it's just he does one better, he, it's as though he sets out to just better himself every time he makes a film, and with this being his ninth feature film, I'm just blown away, just the this film has just opened so many doors in filmmaking. I, I'm just so impressed with the scale of this film. Now, the scale of the film does overpower the story because you're just so fascinated with just the visuals, you know, the sets, the, the scenery, you know, the real locations and just the cinematography, just everything is so beautiful and I have to say it should only be watched in the IMAX. What an incredible experience and it will probably be the last ever film to be projected in 70mm IMAX. So history in the making people, you know, this is probably going to be the last time a 70mm is spinning around on that projector. So, you know, this, like I said, this is history in the making so it's possible that Interstellar will be the last. So it's kind of like one of those moments where you're like, oh, the digital age is here because 70 mil is just out the window. But you know, that's one of the reasons why you should go watch this film just uh, before it's too late. So in the IMAX, yes, the visuals are incredible. We've got the full screen IMAX going on and it's all like, wow, in your face. But what was incredible was the sound. Now, that taken that to a whole new level, the sound was just incredible. What, uh, just uh, sat there in my seat and the seats are shaking <laughs> when the space shuttle is like going up in the air. And I was like, I'm in the rocket right now with Matthew McConaughey, because I was just like, <laughs> I couldn't believe it, just the seats were shaking, it was loud, it was rather intense. You really did experience this like 4D nature of cinema. Interstellar is what you want from a science fiction film. Uh, when I was younger I wasn't too much into science fiction but as I get older and I start to understand things more and actually become interested in science rather than uh, the little girl I was just going, science, don't need to know about that. I have a bigger interest and uh, sci-fi films just interest me more and more and I love them and I'm soaking them all in. Now Interstellar is based on someone's actual work, it's based on the physicist Kip Thorne's work and I think the film really approached it well. The, you don't get too bogged down with the science, you don't get lost, it's pretty simple to explain, everything they do is understandable. So you found that you could really just go along with this journey and really just enjoy what they're saying rather than going, what are you talking about? I, black holes, wormholes, and dimensions, time and space, what are you talking about? Whereas they really managed to really help the watcher, viewer, <laughs> understand. And like I said, it really does take you on this journey. People are gonna shoot me for saying this, but it, it's the truth. <laughs> you can really see a heavy influence of 2001 Space Odyssey in this film, but what I want to add is, because I know everyone is probably saying that, what I want to add is Nolan has actually created an interesting and inspiring work of art compared to 2001 Space Odyssey. Now I'm probably going to get shot by the 2001 Space Odyssey fans for saying that, but I really do think that he has been influenced by this film, but he has just gone that extra mile with making a work of art, but adding the extra features on there. So it's interesting, it's entertaining, it's inspiring. Intercell is a really wonderful philosophical film. Just the amount of questions it asks and it creates such great conversation just throughout the journey of the film you're just like thinking all the time and thinking what if and uh, what you know what if that's what happens and uh, does this happen and the human nature and uh, you know four dimensionals and time and space and it's all in there in your brain rattling away and the beauty of it is you are still asking yourself these questions after the film you know you're speaking to your mates you're thinking well 
you know, creating conversation, and that's what a film is all about. The casting is great, the acting's great, you know, there's wonderful performances by Jessica Chastain and Mackenzie Fay, uh, who is the newcomer. She was fantastic, really captivated by her performance. Uh, Matthew McConaughey, just again, fantastic performance. Not one of his best, but, you know, he just, he's there, he's got it, he's out there. I've got it. All right, all right, all right. You know, he, he really just makes you just watch him. He draws you in. So the only thing I'd say is with the casting and the acting, it's all fabulous. But again, it's just overshadowed by just this wonderful filmmaking, just the visuals. You you are focused on that. The funny thing is, as much as the cast are wonderful, they are outacted by two machines. Love it. And I get really excited about this film because what I love about it is it will never age. Oh, just everything about it is just ageless. You know, you, you're going to watch this film in 20 years time and it just, you won't feel any different. You know, you watch it in 50 years time and it'll still live up to that. Just purely for the fact that there is barely no green screen, CGI, all that. It's all practical special effects. And even down to when we see all the space, like when you're looking outside of a shuttle, that's all projected images. They did that all up front. So what you're seeing is what the actors, you know, the actors are seeing that at the same time. They're not looking at green screens. And that's what's wonderful about it. It's just, it, it will remain ageless. So as much as everything is fantastic in this film, you know, the, the story alone taking you on a journey and the acting, the cast, you know, I'm really actually just in awe of this film because of the filmmaking and I'm almost to say I was proud of Nolan watching this film. I felt proud for him, just for his personal film that he's made and the fact that you can tell it's so personal and he's so engrossed in his, you know, art that it wasn't self-indulgent as well. That was the beautiful moment of it is none of it was self-indulgent. It was like, he was inviting you in. He was like, come and join me on this journey and, and we'll share the art together. What an incredibly inspiring film just for most people. Like, you know, if you want to make a film, if you uh, are into, you know, philosophical things, even if you just, into acting or just anything alone like I just found this film very inspiring and I'd say Nolan is definitely one of the best filmmakers right now.